Holy cow, Karen, look at what Christian brought. Holy smokes, man. Walk us through this. Yeah, I just, um, I used some uh, recycled uh, wood to, to do a little, just a kind of a little gift, my appreciation for Marty, what he brought us, all, all of us together, and just something for his shop or anywhere he wants to put it. Try to reproduce his little tent here. Move and up close to it, Karen, show it then. With show, his logo. Show some of the details. And uh, try to uh, encapsulate Marty, his passion. It's actually quite heavy. Look at what he wrote on the back. And I have a little note here. Thank you for sharing your passion and knowledge with us, and with me and others. He oh. called me. He oh, just happened nice. to be in the neighborhood and he said he wanted to come by. I thought, man, I appreciate that. I thought he was, we haven't seen each other for a while. I thought he was coming by and bringing me like either uh, a piece of gear from, uh, from Jesse to, to, to try out or something. But this is like, holy shit. I just made room in a shop. This is going in the shop. Hey. Awesome. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. All right, what a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. Um, you might hear the odd noise. I got a neighbor who's doing some construction over there, so you might hear the odd noise. Not too much wind, so hopefully that works out good. Hey, listen, a couple of weeks ago, I, well, a, a month ago, I announced a contest. In the contest, I asked people to, um, to showcase their loadout. And uh, fair is fair, I didn't do a loadout video. Uh, I've done a few in the past, but let's, so I thought, I'm getting ready right now. I'm going on a four day trip solo. Tika is going to come with me. So I thought I'd just go through my loadout and show you what I got. Um, so this is right now, this is my pack. It's ready to go. I'm going to throw it in the truck and I'm actually going to drive away uh, after this video, after I reload it. And this is exactly what I'm taking on the trail for four days and it is 26.4 pounds so i'm not talking base weight or anything like that i'm talking my actual loadout 26.4 pounds so what have i got well let's start with the outside and i'll zoom in and show you some details uh in i'll show some detail clips but this is my pot with uh this is my cook set so you've seen you know that actually i won't show all the details because there's cards that show all of these things but this is my cook set and my cook set is a simple um setup it's on the outside always it's a tox titanium 750 mil and in there is a big lighter i got a starter i got a pocket knife I got my BRS and I got a fuel canister and a scrub pot. So that's my cook set. Now in the other pocket is a first aid kit. And it's a bit bigger than what most people bring and I'll show you what's in there in, uh, in detail. Um, and the reason I bring more is because I'm alone. I'm alone, so I can't rely on anybody else and I need to be prepared for an injury or something. So I'll show you what's in there, but that's my first aid kit. Here's my snack for today. Here's my lunch for today. Um, and then I have, once I start sweating, and I'm bending down a lot. Sometimes my glasses start falling off. So I have this um, lanyard for my glasses. And then on the side, I always leave with some water, um, but I'll, you know, I'll find water on the trail. I got a small cushion and I got a bear spray. And the bear spray is attached to my pack with a lanyard and the safety clip is on there. So I don't lose my safety clip. I see a lot of people lose these. So I put a little uh, zip tie on there. And you make sure that the date is not expired. So this one expires uh, November 2023. So fairly new one. And a little mini tripod came out of the side pocket. 
so that's fine. So that's basically it. Oh, actually. And then this, um, this Outdoor Vitals pack has a couple of little hip pockets. So one hip pocket here is used for cap, uh, batteries, spare GoPro batteries and things like that that I use. So all my GoPro batteries are in there. And uh, a power bank for my phone. I could put a few other things in there, but for now that's all that's in this pocket. And on this other side pocket is also camera gear. So this is a headband and I have a different GoPro mount so I could put it on my tripod. All right. On the outside, anybody who's walked with me over the years will recognize my, my plastic mug. So this is used as, this is my uh, for soups, for eating, for almost everything. A couple of water shoes. So, actually I'm gonna go back to sitting down. So last, in, in the past I crossed rivers wearing Crocs, because I wear full boots. So I'm a leather boot kind of guy and I try and keep my boots dry. So when I get to major river crossings, I need to switch uh, shoes. I've done it with Crocs, but Crocs aren't tight enough on your feet and you can lose a Croc. So last year I went and bought um, $20 water shoes on Amazon and it can be used around camp. And then in this pocket, of course, I have a saw. So where I'm going this weekend does allow fires. If I wasn't allowed fires, this would stay home. And a bag of fire starters. So there was one in my cook set, but I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have enough for, uh, I typically make fires uh, around camp at night and sometimes in the morning. Wind's picking up, hopefully it's not too bad. And then my tent. And for my tent, uh, the only thing I'll talk, uh, you know, I got lots of videos again of the, the, describing the tent. The tent is a, is the tungsten, uh, UL by Marmot. It's a one-person tent and even with Tika she can just crawl on top of my legs. You know the the listed weight here is two pounds nine ounces and the only modifications I've made to the tent, you've seen it in the video, is uh, the the guy lines I added clips to for quick adjustments to the guy lines and then I replaced um, the the tent pegs with I have a I always I always switch bags and this is the bag that I bring for whatever tent I bring there's probably two more pegs in here than I actually need to properly set this tent up I only need eight but I have replaced uh, I've bought the I've done videos again card on these titanium tent pegs that are fantastic uh, in hard rock and uh, hard ground don't bend and so those are the ones that I bring so my tent I don't bring a fly never have been never have so that's it that's the outside let's open it up on the inside see what's on the inside real quick packed near the top is a raincoat this is one by uh, I got this as a Christmas gift or as a birthday gift this is an Eddie Bauer you've seen me wear this in a lot of uh, videos i bring a raincoat i'm accustomed to walking when i'm when my pants are wet i don't care about you know i don't bring rain pants so i have a raincoat a map of the area i'm going my thermarest my mattress any old mattress in these kinds of, in summer conditions in summer conditions i go with pure comfort and so this uh tika's out in the pond so this is an old uh Neo Air. Uh, it's about an inch and a half, two inch thick, so it provides mostly comfort and it does give a bit of insulation from the ground. But in the summer, it's so hot that I'm going with uh, comfort. And then I have a bag of clothes, and I'll show you. I'm not bringing a lot of clothes. Um, last year, I got these waterproof socks that are fantastic, absolutely amazing. I'm, I love socks. I think socks are one of the key things. So I always bring lots of socks in case I get a pair wet or damage a pair. So socks are make life so much easier. 
And then I have a pair of fleece pants that I've owned for at least 20 years, Mountain Equipment Co-op fleece pants. And I bring these. These are what I sleep in, uh, walk around camp in. And then I got an extra t-shirt. This is my camp t-shirt. This is the t-shirt that I put on once I get to camp and the one I sleep in. And another pair of socks and a pair of fleece gloves um, for at night if it gets cold. Because in the mountains here at night, it will get below freezing. So it still gets to the zero degree mark, zero Celsius. Um, put that back in there. Okay, and that's my clothes. Uh, got a puffy jacket for around camp. Oh, I should have, I didn't take these out. Interesting. My Crocs. Uh, I can take them out, but uh, they weigh nothing. Actually, they're really good around camp. They're probably, they're better around camp than the water shoes. This is, uh, uh, just a miscellaneous, actually, this is toiletry. <laughs> Don't get shocked. Toothbrush and toothpaste is, is pretty much all I need. Uh, if I need to wash up with, uh, you know, just water, it will clean me off, it's fine. And then as a backup, because they weigh nothing, a Hydro Blue water filter and uh, a dirty water bag, an old platypus bag, 750 mils. Um, I'll, I, you know, 90% of the water I drink on the trail is unfiltered, untreated, uh, it's just creek water. Put it in this little pouch just to keep things organized. Second pouch is, um, is a fork, a spoon. This could come out, but I left it in there. A simple uh, LED headlamp that weighs nothing. Uh, another lighter and some paracord that can be used for a variety of things around camp. Throwing my, uh, if I decide I want to hang my bag up for food, um, I have some paracord. And then near the bottom, two, uh, four days of food. And I'll open this up on here in a second. I'll open that up. Uh, an assortment of, uh, whenever, whenever I see a roll of toilet paper getting near the end in the house, I'll often grab it and throw it in there. So I got about two, uh, the equivalent of one roll of toilet paper. My Outdoor Vitals, uh, 15 degree F, which is about, uh, zero Celsius bag. Uh, down bag stuffed at the bottom and an outdoor vitals pillow inflatable pillow oh, This was still left in this pouch It's a whiskey bottle, but it's dish soap in there That's it. There's nothing else in there. Ex oh, there is one more thing and I'll show this too. I bring a quick uh, repair kit so let me show you details of some of these other things real quick. All right, so here's my first aid kit and I'll just show you real quick. Um, I think most people carry some sort of painkiller, anti-inflammatory. I like Advil, so I always bring Advil. Uh, tape is useful for a lot of things. Um, I bring a tensor bandage, you twist an ankle or something like that, you got a, a way to do. These are, this is all um, moleskin and blister stuff. Oh, I won't open it. I don't, I don't use a lot of, uh, um, actually, most of the time, this is for Karen or people I'm with. And then I bring just, um, of course, I always have, I always seem to have paracord. I don't know, that could be used as a miniature tourniquet or who knows. I always got a lighter. Um, a repair uh, needles sewing kit can be used for sewing stuff can be used for uh, pulling splinters out and you could actually stitch let's say you got a really bit bad cut you could stitch yourself up but um, for 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 stitching purposes I mean I bring I bring uh, q-tips and all sorts of medication and bandages but for stitching purposes if you had a severe cut these butterfly uh strips are are the best so 
Um, so this is butterfly strips, Q-tips, and other pain medication like uh, diarrhea medication and um, back pain medication, a pair of tweezers. Some people argue that, you know, this is going overboard, but uh, a mirror, if you get uh, something in your eye or and or something on your face and you have to see what you're doing and you can also use it as signaling and then a couple of large bandages. So luckily I've almost never had to use any of this stuff. Uh, when I reach in there, I tend to use the drugs the most. And this is uh, what I call a repair kit. This this could also go in a Ziploc bag, but it's uh, it's in here. So. My repair kit is a flattened roll of duct tape. Duct tape can repair so many things. You know, you lose a sole on a boot, you can tape it up. Uh, you can patch things. This is not entirely necessary. It's a repair kit for my thermarest, but uh, you know, what's the worst that happens? You lose a thermarest, you sleep on the ground, no big deal. A couple of, uh, you never know what you could use. Uh, some, some webbing and a spare buckle. This weighs nothing. Again, geez, I got paracord everywhere. Paracord could be used to fix, you know, this could be used to fix a strap with the sewing kit from the other kit, the buckle. But more importantly, all these, uh, I, I bring a ton of zip ties. Zip ties can also be used to fix, let's say you break the harness on your backpack or something on your tent. You'd be surprised what you could fix with um, a bunch of different size uh, zip ties. And then this is a tube. Let's say I break a pole on my tent. I can put the, um, I, I can use this as a sleeve to, uh, and maybe wrap some duct tape and I can fix a tent pole that's broken. And it's universal, so I don't leave it with the tent because I leave it with the bag, depending on which tent I have. And that's all that's in there. Perfect. And this is the food bag. And it's a Dyneema bag that's uh, waterproof that can be used to hang and I got four days in there and I'm just going to show um, Everybody's seen this before so everything is individually wrapped but for each day So here's a typical breakfast uh, Oatmeal a couple of coffees and a granola bar. So one breakfast uh, two breakfast and three breakfasts. So when you're four days, three nights, I got three breakfasts. And then there's also uh, these electrolytes in there. Then I got a lunch. So lunch is a uh, half a box of uh, uh, macaroni and cheese, or as we call it in Canada, KD Craft Dinner, an electrolyte, some peanuts. And then another lunch is, uh, there was one lunch on the side of my bag. Another lunch is a cup of soup, some beef jerky, some peanuts. Here's uh, another lunch. And then my dinners for this trip were going to be super simple. So Chef Evan's not with me. Sorry, Evan. I hope I'm not disappointing you, but an Alpine Air, which could actually be stretched to two rations. And then um, a, a rice ration with tuna. Actually, I have two uh, rice rations with tuna, chocolate bars, a bag of miscellaneous stuff, a few uh, drink crystals, some teas, and I was going to bring a very small amount of whiskey to celebrate one night. Listen, that was quick. It was really, really quick, but uh, fair is fair. Like I said, I made other people show their loadout, so I thought I'd show my loadout. Just again, a couple of things. Uh, I'm heading out into the mountains solo, so, you know, 26, uh, yeah, 26 pounds. Uh, about two pounds a day of that is food. So there's about eight pounds of food. So if I do 26 minus eight, that's uh, 18 pounds as a base weight, camera gear, uh, fuel, and a thing, a few other things. So, you know, I'm in the 14 to 15 pound base weight and, and uh, uh, unapologetic about that. I'm going into the mountains and um, I need gear that will be uh, reliable and um, I need uh, a bit of extra clothing and things like that and uh, I'm alone uh, you'll have noticed I don't have a Garmin with me and that's uh, that's a fact that's a reality I've never had one I don't rely on a, a GPS I rely on my skills and I don't have a satellite communication device either um, I file a plan I'm gone for four days and if I'm not back on the fourth day, my wife knows to wait and then they'll come look for me 
on day five, which has never happened. I've always gotten myself out. Um, it's a philosophical thing. It's not a macho thing. It's just the fact that I, 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 I want to test myself properly. And there's, um, there's an, there's an element of, of having that little extra risk that makes it fun for me. Um, I don't know if that's the right word and I might not be expressing myself, but I, I don't want, I, I, I don't bring a satellite device as that, as that uh, lifeline and uh, to each his own that's your choice if you bring one and and most of the guys I hike with have them but I don't bring one anyways I'm off now I'm gonna go do my hike and uh, we'll see you back in uh, in a week or so and Marty signing off and saying uh, hopefully I get to see you on some of the trails and if you can get off the beaten path